Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'll be presenting iGyro, which is uh, industry's smallest 9 degrees of freedom sensor. This is based on a hardware which uses uh, 3 axis accelerometer, 3 axis magnetometer, and there's a virtual gyro that is simulated in the software. This is optimized for Android platforms and it enables all the virtual uh, gyro functionality for mobile platforms, tablets, uh, cell phones, and now also on the wearable side. The low power consumption is key to iGyro. There have been previous attempts in the industry to do virtual gyros and uh, performance, accuracy, low latency, these are the things that differentiate this iGyro from the previous attempts. MQ's iGyro MC7010 is in volume production now. Today we are happy to announce that we have the smallest size, 9 degrees of freedom, 7030, which is 2 by 2 by 0.95. So this is the 2 by 2 i gyro that we demonstrated today in the technology showcase. Okay. So what else do you, what do you got on that thing? How many different MEMS Typic devices? Typically on uh, these reference platforms, there is a Bluetooth, uh, then there is sensor. Sensors are the most key. Bluetooth is the other one. Then you can have flash just to store memory. What was Typically, the, this one is used for gaming. Okay. The benefit of this will be the instead of they have to charge every six hours or eight hours, they would have to charge every week, once a week. Huh? That's the big difference. Oh wow! So that's the scaling in terms of low power. So this zooming, panning functionality that's based on gyroscope, and it's using our virtual gyros, nine degrees of freedom. There are other six axes, which is. 3 axis of accelerometer, 3 axis of magnetometer, and then the gyroscope functionality. So you can see now I can go through this, I can. This is the game that we are playing. I can follow wow. this guy going there. <laughs> Whenever you see that enemy, then you try to shoot it through this. We are making very small vector sensors to customer applications, basically to your applications. And uh, I'm talking about uh, infrared spectroscopy, and uh, all materials, I mean liquids, gases, have a spectral fingerprint. And uh, the fingerprint is nowadays uh, measured with uh, spectrometers. And this information is used to uh, process control and uh, measuring concentration. Uh, we make very small spectrometers uh, to the industry. Nowadays, they want a sample from the process line, brings to the lab, and then they use huge pens of devices. But we make the similar in that size. This is standard sensor. We sell that as it is. In addition to that, we have an application kit uh, that contains uh, gas cubette, light straws, uh, some sampling for liquid and gases. Okay. So if you're interested on, on liquid application kit, you have some some mechanics to place some li liquids. If you're interested on gas sampling kit, then you have a gas application kit to have gas, gas cell and light source. Okay, so in the bubble up play pure drive racket, all the sensors are within the handle of the racket uh, at this position. Um, where we measure uh, all the motions performed by a player with the racket, and we're able to determine if a stroke uh, performed was uh, a forehand, a backhand, a serve, or a smash motion. We're also able to track the power of uh, each of these shots, meaning this is the racket speed, and uh, the ball impact location in the string bed. So if you want to use the racket, you just have to turn it on by pushing uh, a button on the butt cap of the racket, there. And then when you see the blue light, the racket is recording my game now. If I want to transfer the data to my smartphone by Bluetooth, I just press the lower button two seconds, it displays in the purple, and then I can collect the data that are generated by me on the racket. There is a, a USB cable. Uh, USB port there uh, where you can charge the racket 
uh, using it or transfer the data to the computer if you prefer to do so. There are really no sensors at the there, upper part. And all the sensors are just located. Motion. Yeah. And there is a vibration sensor as well. Does that uh, pick up but a in the handle, impact? And yes, it, it, it checks the impact and also measure the vibration so that we, we are, that's uh, by analyzing this vibration that we are able to track the ball impact location. Uh, for example, if you hit the sweet spot, then the level of vibration will be very low. If you hit at the top, it will be the maximum. And then it's a bit the same if you hit there near the yoke, but by analyzing the signals, we are able to separate uh, these impacts. So, what is NOT? What, do, what, is, what does NOT's technology do? It's a gesture control device, and we believe it's the world's first pixel accurate gesture control device. And what do I mean by pixel accurate? So, you know, I'm driving this presentation just using the NOD ring, and it's connected to my MacBook over Bluetooth Low Energy. To leave you with like, some sense of applications, I want to just do a quick video here. Uh, this is NOD. Uh, being used two nodes on the user, you can see in the top right corner. And essentially, uh, this display is the Oculus, which is a virtual reality display. And it's uh, once you put that headset on, you can't really see anything in the real world anymore. And what we have done here is we kind of simulated that experience, and you can see how accurately the hands are being tracked uh, from the real world into the simulated world. So it makes for an excellent gaming experience. Taking this further, we also have now. You know, people are looking at us more as a platform than isolated just device. And here you see four NOD devices, two on each finger and two on the, uh, on the shoulder. And you can see that skeletal model is tracking this motion very accurately. And this has far-reaching applications, uh, not just in gaming, but, you know, performance, at, at, at athletics, and also for, like, you know, in the medical field. So we have, like, a couple of uh, touch-sensitive areas here. This, is, uh, this area is called a slider and uh, it's capacitive touch, and then there's one over here and on the other side, and then we have tactile buttons as well. And so we interact in a couple of different ways. So we can, if, we, if I touch here and move my hand, it essentially would be a pointer, a, free, a pointer moving on the screen, similar to a, a cursor of a mouse. And then I can also do gestures where I touch here, and then I can do a, a right swipe, a left swipe, up, down, clockwise to select, counterclockwise to exit out. And uh, people can take any uh, one of these and combine it with their own sort of combination of gestures, touch, tactile, to make their own compound gesture. Yeah, for the demonstration purpose, this is the temp integrated temperature and humidity sensor. And basically what I'm doing is just I'm put introducing my finger close to the humidity sensor to see whether it is able to pick up the humidity from my finger. Uh, when I test the sensor with the finger, it immediately picks up that response, the temperature. It's doing both at the same time. Right. In yeah. A, yeah, because <laughs> there is a humidity also right. on my finger, so it is doing both at a time. There are, there are a lot of applications for temperature and humidity sensor. It's so universal. But the problem right now with the sensors that is in the market, they are capacitive kind of type of sensor. The response time is like 5 seconds to 15 seconds. Now, when you use this sensor in voice recognition or breathing monitoring, breathing monitoring in one, one second you do a couple of times, exhale and inhale. And when you speak, in one second how many times words you speak. And if the response time is like 15 seconds, you might be able to track that, that the humidity change when you speak, isn't right, it? Right. So you need a really fast response time. So I think that's where these high speed sensors are very, very useful. Our name of our company is Keg Data. We're based in Austin, Texas, along with uh, Freescale. And I want to thank Freescale. They're uh, our principal partners that developed the pressure sensor that we use in our technology. 
I'm sure this is the perfect subject before lunch is to talk about here. Uh, basically, we overcame a, a problem that we had with people not being able to tell how much keg beer they had. And it, uh, the, the company started when me and my friend ran out of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected. So we worked and we found out a way to, uh, to work with uh, Freescale. And we developed a keg coupler that goes on the top of the keg. This is uh, what it looks like. And this is the whole thing. The other parts I go with this is simply a hub that picks up the signal and sends it to the internet. Uh, but what we do is we have a pressure sensor that measures the difference between the CO2 pressure and the column of beer. Basically, you dive, you go scuba dive or dive, and you know when you dive down in the water, the pressure gets higher. What this does, it just measures, measures that difference between those two. So by checking the pressure between the CO2 and the column of beer where the sensor is, we're able to tell how much beer is in the keg. Basically, there's about one volt difference that the Freescale transducer is being able to accurately pinpoint exactly what that pressure difference is. This is a close-up of what the coupler actually looks like. There's a lot of problems with it. You think measuring beer would be an easy job, but it's not. There has to be very specific elements that deal with couplers to make something that can be fitted onto a keg that there's already about, I don't know, 8 million of them or 8 billion around the planet. So we wanted to create something that people could just bolt on top. And part of the problem with that is where you pick up your pressures is very critical. And so we developed this, if you can see the, uh, the pressure, free scale pressure transducer that goes to the side. We picked a static place to, to put that on. 